course chess, Bobby Fischer's game of the century. We are going to use one of the most famous games in chess history to uncover a lot of secrets to strong chess play, a lot of fundamentals of strong chess play, and use this game, which is just a perfect example of very, very strong tactical play, as well as pretty much all elements of chess. Great positional play, great psychology, great opening, and great finish. This game has been called the game of the century because Bobby Fischer, at the young age of only 13, defeated a strong grandmaster in a tournament in New York. And it really just has everything that you look for in a chess game. So it's a great game to look at in order for us to learn how to become better all around chess players. So we're going to go through the game. We're going to analyze what happens in it step by step. We're going to look at how Bobby Fischer used principles of the opening to get his pieces into the optimal locations in the most efficient manner possible, and how his opponent, the, the Grandmaster, made some slight inaccuracies that led to him losing the game. Very, very instructive. So we're going to talk about how we can make every single move count and how Bobby Fischer does this wonderfully, how he basically just follows basic chess principles. I mean, these things are simple. It's just like in any sport, in any discipline that we learn, you have to learn the fundamentals. And he uses the fundamentals, I guess a grandmaster, and um, the result is, is fantastic. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to learn how to avoid weaknesses in our position. There are very, very small weaknesses that his opponent allows to happen in his position that Bobby Fischer takes advantage of in order to win the game. And this is one of the reasons why all of his opponents throughout history have said he was such a strong player. He would create a tiny, sometimes imperceptible to his opponent's weakness in their position, and he would focus on that weakness until he had a winning position. It's a very important principle in chess. We're going to go into that and something called the principle of two weaknesses in this lesson. We're going to look at how can we think in such a way as to identify tactical opportunities, okay? Chess is a large part tactics. It's one of the first things that we usually learn when we start to try to get good at chess is we start to learn about pins and forks and try to uncover tactics. Well, there are shortcuts, there are rules of thumb and things that we can do in order to look into a position and see tactical opportunities. It's very important and it's one of the hardest things to learn. If you want to get good at chess, it can be really frustrating sometimes without a really good teacher. And so in this section, we're going to look at how we can identify tactical opportunities. And again, this game of Bobby Fischer's highlights beautifully uh, how we can think about the board and see these types of things. So look at those opportunities, how to calculate more deeply. There's some shortcuts in order to calculate exchanges very rapidly, which is really, really important. And we'll save you time on the clock. And um, another thing that we see in this game is when to sacrifice a piece. There are some times when his opponent could have sacrificed pieces or could have won a sacrifice. And then, of course, one of the reasons why this game is called the game of the century is because Bobby Fischer famously sacrifices his queen in order to use his minor pieces and make a really beautiful checkmate. So this is an important topic, understanding when to sacrifice a piece and when not to. A lot of people think that they're going to sacrifice a piece and get a checkmate, and it doesn't work out, and it shows that their sacrifice was unsound. We need to understand when we should and should not do that. Okay, And then, of course, having a long-term strategy. You have to have a strategic plan for every single one of your games. You don't just look for moves and play. You have to have a plan. You have to be able to visualize what the end game is going to look, by, look like if you have a big exchange of pieces. And there are ways that we can do that. And, of course, we need to understand the goals of each opening structure. I have two separate courses on opening, so we can't get too deep into this. It takes whole entire courses to go over the opening. But if we understand how each structure has something different that it wants to achieve, it can help us a lot become a better, stronger chess player. So we're going to look at how this game shows us how to improve all these different things. And really, I chose this game to analyze for this course because it shows how a strong chess player is very well-rounded. Bobby Fischer, even at the young age of 13, he was turning into a super strong chess player because all the things that he had learned and studied over the last several years combined with his, you know, his genius mind, and he created this very well-rounded ability to do everything well in the game. Great openings, great endings, 
great tactics, great strategy. And this game shows him using all of those things against a very strong opponent and to defeat him in a really beautiful game. So I think this is one of the most instructive games that we can use. And so I want to go through how Bobby Fischer became a super grandmaster and one of the strongest players in history. And hopefully you guys will learn a lot through this lesson.